So, okay. let me begin. Uh, so this is a, the follow-on of the presentation of yesterday, on the one hand, and of what was presented in, we presented uh, uh, Jenny and I in Xiamen uh, 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 Sendai. So, <coughs> at ICC, SS ICCF 20 and ICCF 20, we have presented several permanent results, which we quickly summarize here. So, if we use the same mathematics as quantum physicists, okay, then a straightforward application of the Banner-Tarski theorem to the Hamiltonian of the isolated system in classical static cycle thermodynamics brings to the non-conservation of energy. This very result has been um, validated by Institut Henri Poincaré. Okay. Our previous presentation that you saw yesterday, and we pushed the traditional argument in Sendai, this one, of evolution of any closed system towards a state of maximum entropy to its limit, by extending the notion of uh, what order means in any statistical uh, physics, physical system, sorry, and show that in such a model there is a theoretical way to make an artificial fuel which, give, which will give more energy when burning it than the making of it, okay, without contradicting the second principle and the first one, of course, of thermodynamics. This is what we showed in, Sen in Sendai. And uh, we also showed that it is possible to extend thermodynamics, which I said yesterday with the serial numbers, uh, to the general, uh, uh, general open system and the whole, the whole universe. Uh, we proved also that, once again, using the same mathematics as quantum physicists, through the theorem of Zermelo, that at any moment we can extract as much energy uh, uh, from any system as it in its beginning, whereas it has cooled down. Very big result, this one, because, uh, you know, there is conservation of energy, and if you look at the current system, orthodox physics, when it's cooled, you have the same energy as in the beginning, but you cannot extract the energy. Here, the result is that we can extract as much energy as in the beginning, as, the, as in the Big Bang, for example. Uh, so, according to these results, we suggested that Lenner reactions could be not called fusion, so not fusion, and, uh, but new kind of reactions above chemistry. So, I refer to what uh, Jenny and Jacques presented for their picochemistry which uh, Jacques uh, told us, uh, and maybe not here, but uh, in Avignon last year, uh, that it's uh, 1,000 times uh, more energetic than chemistry and 1,000 times less than uh, fusion. And, uh, so, and this is a strong conviction linked to our previous work presented at new 3 sc with a new model of the atom, which justified, which uh, uh, justify was some experiment already detected, and I refer to what uh, P uh, Peter Agelstein said this morning with the Cook model, because in U3SC we, we proposed a physical model of Cook's model. Cook's model is purely mathematical, and we made it, uh, we made it physical, okay? And we even uh, generalized it because Cook's model is, is a model of the nucleus and we extended it uh, to the, the whole atom. Uh, so, um, however, we shall show here in, in this presentation that uh, our model based on symmetries can perfectly explain why and under which conditions cold fusion, real fusion, can occur. And we will even show a way to master it and we shall also show why such cold fusion phenomena can, the case being, bring to the absence of radiation. But the case being only, not systematically. Uh, it depends on the conditions, uh, whatever they are, gammas, neutrons, and so on. We shall also propose a new approach of multi-sum reactions, uh, and in particular three-sum, uh, which uh, uh, can bring to excess heat and this is basically the way we shall explain picochemistry coined by uh, Jenny and Jack uh, on, on, on this point. So, most of these theoretical results, which we think are of importance, were presented at Lenner conferences, 
but we did not explain how to use them to make linear working systems. So I'm, it's more, this presentation is more practical than the previous one, it's less theoretical. Even if, or maybe for most of, of you, you will find it too much uh, theoretical. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, um, okay, so let's, let's, let's go into this. So I, I remind you the, the, the context I described yesterday. So we, have, we are in the context of non-Archimedean geometry, which is our referential. Here you have the sphere, so uh, it cannot be a sphere according to what I said yesterday. Okay, because we need to have an effect, otherwise we wouldn't have an effect. It would be symmetrical, viewed from the outside, so nothing would happen. Uh, and uh, uh, this sphere, or this figure, is full of, uh, 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 of an infinite number of uh, uh, infinitesimal size sorry, particles. Uh, they form what we call, I say, Planck box. This is not a, I'm sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. The infinite, infinite barrier box. This is the, the, uh, the, the red line around the circle you see. Okay, and um, verify the action of infinite to define the entity. So the action of infinite, you know mathematics are based on eight actions, the zermelo frankel theory. And one of them is the action of infinite due to Cantor, basically. So this is, you know, you have a step between finite numbers and infinite one. There is some kind of barrier. And probably mathematicians need, need to, to, to do some progress in order to better understand what there is in this barrier and probably refine a bit what, what happens and to, to better understand. Uh, so the symmetry from inside, uh, sorry, yes. The symmetry from inside implies the stability, the case being, okay? Be because this is a, a, an entity which is full of in, an infinity of infinitesimal size particles, or for example, of diameter one over omega. And it can be a point of space where there is a field. It can be a particle, it can be anything, if it's stable, so it's, if it's symmetric. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it will split into different components. Uh, this entity on the right can be either, so this is what I say, stable particle, unstable, and the point where there is a field, basically. Uh, so, symmetries and environment. The symmetry of the system in its environment has to be appreciated through all the infinitesimal particles at stake in the environment. And this is what I, the remark I made to David Nagel this, this morning, okay? not only two particles, it, you can have plenty of others. And you have a global environment which must be taken into account. And this is too simple to consider always two particles or two things, two systems, two subsystems. And uh, so the, basically here we have three particles, say, and we are basing into a, a kind of ether of uh, 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 infinitesimal particles which create fields, and the case being several kinds of fields. Uh, the, so there is the interior of the particle, and the global disposal in space characterizes the whole system. Okay, We are speaking about geometry, only geometry for the moment. So on the contrary of what physicists do, such a point of view in the general case prevents considering two things, either independent fields or add the different fields. This is a global system. I, I, we are speaking, I'm coming back, we are speaking about the uh, symmetries, okay? Symmetry means a, a global thing here. It doesn't mean, oh, I superpose symmetry of the ether with the symmetry of particle one, with the symmetry of particle, doesn't work like that. It, math, the math do not permit this, okay? So we have to, 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 to look at things globally. And this is the kind of counterintuitive view of the trick consisting in separating the variables. You know, mathematicians, physicists do like separating variables. Why? Because if they don't, they cannot solve the problems, okay? But it doesn't mean they have found the, the, the right solution, in fact, okay? This is an easy way. So in many cases it works, but we think that in this case it doesn't work. It cannot work. This is a hole. Uh, an example of this can be experimentally seen in quantum physics, okay? Because you know that the probability of quantum physics do not 
follow the Kolmogor factions. And this is the big dispute between the Copenhagen School on the one hand and uh, guys like uh, Einstein, De Broglie, Schrodinger, who thought that there were hidden variables. So we, we have this. Uh, I think this is a very good example of what, of what happens. Now I'm coming back to what's represented in Sendai at ICCF20, and we suggested that in matter you can have, so we, uh, the context was the, the following one. The entropy function is a measure of order. And we go from, uh, according to the second principle, for uh, an order, uh, ordered um, system to a complete disorder when, when everything is, is over. And uh, so, uh, let's imagine that we would have any order function on, on, on a, a system, and depending on, on, on the different components you can have, we can have the order, global order, which is the tensor product of some suborders in, in the system. And uh, if the, the making of the fuel consists in just adding one tensor product, the nth order relation to the pre-existing n minus one tensor products, then it will cost one addition of one order relation. But if when we burn, we burn the whole, that is the n order relations, we will get more energy, of course, than what it costs to, to, to bring only one. This is, this is basically what we said in, in, in Sendai, okay? Uh, so, uh, now let's suggest uh, uh, beginning with the periodic stable, so and symmetric structure at the nanoscale. Built like that, with this tensor product uh, uh, of order relations, we trigger its collapse. Okay, so we begin to bring the tensor product of uh, order relations. And... Uh, so we get the, different, the consumption of the different underlying order relations, and it gives, obviously, excess heat. Excess heat because we have made the fuel in the context, which is not the context of the burning. Okay? It doesn't mean we have created energy out of nothing, in this case. Uh, however, the consumption will depend on the global environment at stake, which means the fields, basically. And such fields have to be chosen so that the dissymmetry is maximum if we want to increase the, consumption, the global consumption. Now, cool fusion. Let's go, let's, let's go to fusion. <laughs> so, first of all, hot fusion is got through tunnel effect only and needs a lot of kinetic energy to force the barrier uh, under the tunnel effect. Our view is quite different, whereas consistent with this one the orthodox one. Uh, why? The resistance of fusion, uh, to fusion for us is linked to a dissymmetry, okay? Because if you want something to happen, we need dissymmetry. So even resistance uh, uh, is characterized by dissymmetry. And uh, the, the bigger the degree of dissymmetry, the harder, of course. However, if we consider, say, two particles, to simplify, and we want to merge under the condition that the global picture is symmetric, taking into account the environment, so the fields, then fusion should occur with a resistance which is proportional to the degree of symmetry. Okay? And this means that if the degree of symmetry is zero, there, there is no resistance. And we will fuse with no resistance. Uh, whatever the temperature. Even at, say, 20 Kelvin. Or 1 Kelvin. Okay? Great difference. Now, for us, the tunnel effect then, and this probability of recurrence, only is a characterization of the dissymmetry degree, locally uh, corresponding to the conditions of the experiment. And uh, if we change the dissymmetry degree, the probabilities of the tunnel effect will change. And we all know that. But generally, tunnel effect is a bit of kind of uh, magic uh, effect. It, it's like that. It doesn't... Okay. So we can, in, with this theory, we can change the probabilities of the tunnel effect. Now, once fusion has occurred, we get either a symmetric entity and stable, and so we expect no radiation. 
you fuse things, they make a global symmetric thing, and if it's symmetric, nothing gets out because it stays symmetric, it's stable, so you don't get any radiation. Okay? If it's dissymmetric, it radiates. And depending on the degree of dissymmetry, it will radiate something or not. Okay? Uh, so the mystery of Lenner without radiation or with uh, is solved in this case because everything is possible depending on the conditions. So you could have some Lenner reactions with no radiation under some conditions and with radiations under others. Okay? And depending on, we could play with this. So, beyond cold fusion. It is known, however, that some fusions are not possible, like proton proton or neutron neutron. Uh, so, in, in the model we present, it is theoretically possible. Okay? It depends only on the environment. It's not because we were not able to do it until now that it's not possible. So we only have to make, only into quotes of, of course, to make the global system symmetric and it will occur, okay, if we can. So now we, we need to, to find the way to. And uh, uh, if we look, for example, at the proton-proton fusion via a neutron, which is a theoretical uh, scheme, okay, so we, we get this, and because proton-proton we cannot today, but through neutrons we can fuse protons. So we would get this, but we could have some alternative, for example, like this. And which is, which is interesting in this is that because our, remember, our particles are full of infinitesimal size particles, uh, then we could have something like that, and it corresponds quite well to the distribution of charge in the in the neutron, you know, a, you know that uh, depending on, on the distance we are from the center along the radius, either we get some uh, positive charge or negative. Um, then you remember this uh, picture of yesterday. So I, rem I remind you, uh, symmetric from the center and so from the outside and with dissymmetric uh, 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 components. Uh, so, it represents what we shall call a threesome relationship between particles, here, okay? And uh, they are clearly, according to our theory, a system which is symmetric, viewed from the outside, uh, and, and stable with three components which are obviously non-symmetric and therefore unstable. However, if there are slightly different evolutions between the three identical uh, components, uh, then this will break the symmetry from the outside, and it will evolve in a, as a unique dissymmetry, global dissymmetry, which is uh, a bit uh, uh, different of what I said before, but it's consistent with what, 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 what I said, basically, and probably generating excess heat, because we were expecting a symmetric evolution of the dissymmetric components, that if not, okay, it will evolve differently. Uh, such threesome relationship between particles have already been invented in some way by Jenny and Jacques, once again, in picochemistry, because they have the iron atom, the uh, proton of hydrogen, and the electron. Okay, so it can work like that, okay? And this is a way. Now, we can have much more complicated scenarios. And here is a picture of a, what we call a 632 symmetry in the plane. And so, uh, you have uh, six sum relationships, three sum relationships, and orthodox couples. And you, have, you can have evolution of the system all in parallel, okay? And uh, with a mixture, a mixture of things happening on this and which can um, uh, lose a bit the experimentalists because you would have to sort out what are the phenomena at stake and characterize them differently. Uh, considering time is a must according to the theory, I, I, I told this yesterday already, and uh, we can play with time uh, uh, over time, so with local symmetries, local dissymmetries and so on, Sometimes solving, slowing down the reaction, sometimes speeding, speeding it up, sometimes increasing the dissymmetric potential and so on, because we can apply fields. Generally, when you apply fields, they are 
In most experiments, they are constant. So the, we plead here for non-constant fields and even not periodic fields. Okay, so uh, but well calculated fields to 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 inject the field at the right time to 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 trigger the dissymmetry. Um, so to our knowledge, um, two other things have also been neglected: the presence of all fields. On the one hand, this is. I refer to the uh, separation of variables before and the geometric aspects of the experiment, since once again all this deals with geometry. Uh, global conclusion for the both papers in order to remain honest and honorable, we need to add one paramount comment which implications is more than great in our way of looking at the world. <laughs> and uh, indeed, all our world is guided with symmetries and dissymmetries in our view. We can deal with anything if we create locally either the right symmetry or the right dissymmetry. And so the conclusion we must draw of that, you know, most physicists say the world is what it is because we have the laws of physics and we are a tribu a tri how do you say that, tributary. We cannot move, we cannot change them. And what I'm telling you now is this is exactly the contrary. The world is what we want it to be. It's, it's, it's not, you know, we can change locally, the, 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 locally the, the, the laws of physics because we can change the geometry. Be aware of that. If, if, we, if, if this theory which we present to you is true, we are limited by the number of symmetries in the world which we can deal with in our 3D or 4D space. Then we have three, you know, we have three kinds of geometries. Uh, elliptic, Euclidean, hyperbolic. If the geometry is either uh, uh, elliptic or Euclidean, the number of groups of symmetries is finite. So the, the, law, the number of laws of physics is finite. But if the geometry is hyperbolic, the number of groups of symmetries is infinite. And this changes everything because we, have, we can do anything we want. Okay? And so I, I began, remember yesterday, with the Bible. I will end with the Bible. So I began with the first chapter. I, it's, it's a bit further on in, in, in the text. And this is one Jesus said to the Orthodox physicist. <laughs> Okay, because we ha you have so little faith, for truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move, nothing will be impossible to you. Okay, and this is what I propose you as a physics, new physics, because you, you know, the, we can change the laws, this is only geometry. And this is consistent with what Einstein said, for example, and some others, because even quantum physicists use uh, Hilbert spaces, which is only geometry, nothing else. And I finished. I, 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 will, I will preface my question by admitting that I'm a little bit uh, grumpy for having been jet like today, so I apologize in advance. There's this um, joke that goes that mathematician, this is an engineer, we're going by the house on fire. Mathematician looks at it and says, ah, it can be put out and keeps walking. The physicist says, well, if you use water to put it out, it reduces to a previously solved problem and keeps walking. And the engineer rolls up his sleeves and starts putting the fire out. So here the question is, um, I've seen four of your talks at this point. I haven't seen very many Hamiltonians. I haven't seen any simple models. I haven't seen any predictions. I've seen some very high level uh, principles, but I, I haven't seen anything that connects with palladium deuteride in a way that I can understand. I haven't seen a model I can calculate and get a number out. Um, so, to get the pens off. So, so, so let, yes, let, me yes, yes. Lay, let me lay my grumping on the table and uh, ask you to respond. And I apologize. You know what? You're, you're, you're perfectly right. And this is, uh, uh, this is consistent with the 
the, the questions that asked David Nagel this morning, okay? Uh, so, today we are in a world, I, I, I said that this morning, uh, maybe you, were, you weren't there, but, but the, we are in a world which is based on finance. People want money in the end, so you need equations, you need to be quantitative, you need to be predictive, and you want always more. I, I remind you that in the beginning of the 18th century, there was what we call naturalist, and before quantitative, they did observation and description. And then after one century, the, the math came in, quantitative math, not descriptive math, okay? I also told David Nagel this morning that if you have topological phenomena, like in isomers in, for, for isomers in chemistry, mm -hmm. and you also have a, uh, topological superconductivity and so on. It's very difficult to, to make quantitative things. It's qualitative and it works. So qualitative can work in the first step and uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, quantitative with equations. We, 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 we must go step by step. Maybe it's a bit too uh, early to do that. So why do I say that? Because I can tell you. I'm working with Cedric Lenny, who is Men, Phil's medal 2010. He agreed on most of the results I present here. And uh, when I asked him to pay two PhDs by Airbus four years ago, five years ago in Tremor, he told me, I won't, I won't give you these guys because we consider in mathematics that it is a too difficult problem to tackle today. Okay? So if you want to have quantitative things in this, you need to, to pay a lot of PhDs, and then maybe after some while, decades, you will have some quantitative things, because you need to find the group of symmetries in the, in the field of surreal numbers, which is, as I said yesterday, not a set, it's a proper class. It's a huge problem, a huge, huge problem. Okay? Who is able to tackle this today? Uh, my personal opinion on this is nobody but physics could help tackling it in a physical way which would give satisfactory answer to some extent and uh, without uh, having to, to face in the, the big wall of uh, what we've done in math along the centuries now and which will bring probably to a no way or failure because too, too, too much, too difficult. Okay, so I, I don't know if it's satisfactory as an answer. But One more question. I think, I think in this field we have to be very careful um, that we don't bite off more than we can chew. So we have very limited resources and limited number of people. It sounds to me that you're really challenging <laughs> sort of the basis of um, mm -hmm the epistemology of science of the 20th century. You quoted many scientists and philosophers, I'm sure you're familiar with Karl Popper and the idea of falsification and the idea that you ought to put forth a hypothesis that can be, you know, that can either prove or disprove a theory. So you're, you're putting all that aside and saying this is not the way science ought to work. And maybe you're right, I don't know, I can't judge it, but I think our field is not big enough, it doesn't have enough people, it doesn't have the right type of people for that kind of problem, it doesn't have the resources to take on such a big project. We were already doing more than you could ask from such a small group of people. So I think to be very careful to not be distracted too far outside of can I use Can I ask you back a question? You all are physicists here. I proved, validated by Cedric Benedict, Phil's Medal 2010, that there is no conservation in an uh, isolated system. What do you say to that? What do you answer to this? Well, okay. can, you make a prediction, can you make a prediction and suggest a critical experiment that can either prove or disprove it. I, I'm not convinced. I need an experiment because you can make many theories and conjectures, and if you don't tie them to this is not a conjecture. This is I don't a, need. To, this, I don't is, this is a, uh, this is a, a result in orthodox physics. I don't for you for proving the there is no conservation in the isolated system. I just use the physics you use, nothing else. This is I don't use this one. Well, okay? this reminds and me it of is the, contradictory. It this, is contradictory. This reminds me of the you know proofs of God, and you know. 
can always try. There's many proofs of God, but it's very difficult to eventually. Well, God is something else. God has been put in the equations, as I told you yesterday, by the quantum physicists. Okay, and in some way, this is what I prove, saying that energy is not conserved in an isolated system. Okay, you cannot. We we have mathematics is a global coherent system. Okay, it's even so coherent that uh, even mathematicians are amazed. That is not contradictory. Okay. But look you at think physics. This is the right physics is full of contradictions. I'm sorry, physics is full of contradictions. And here I, I showed you one big one, you know, no conservation of energy in an isolated system. That aside, do you think this is the right community? This is the right marketplace for this? I think yes, because you are the only one who wants to have excess heat. The other ones don't want to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have, um, I'm, please forgive me, I'm reaching so far back in my education that I may be at fault here. You mentioned variation of rate, speeding up and speeding down. Are you also suggesting that you, in, within these closed systems there is a violation of Noether's theory of time dependence and time invariance? Because that would suggest if you violate Noether, then <laughs> it's all better off. Emi no ether. Yeah. Ether, I'm sorry. Uh, Emi no ether. No ether sphere, if you like, yes. Oh. A, a question of which I told you I was reaching on the way back in my education. Uh, <laughs> it's about the fact that everything that happens is time dependent. Yes. And if you the first time, yes, yes. then all better off, you, you can produce free energy or whatever, the conservation thing goes out the window. So maybe, I just wonder whether when you mentioned very great, you are also thinking that very time itself within your process. No, there is no time. The, 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 the way I show that there is no conservation of energy in uh, standard physics, okay? You know, quantum physics is used for the measures what we call the action of a choice in mathematics. And the consequence of the action of choice has been one of these, which is paradoxical, has been proved in 1924 by Bandar and Tarski. What does it mean? You take a sphere, uh, you cut it into five parts, you use isometries, uh, and you, you move the parts and you paste them again, uh, and you get two spheres. So let, let's take the Hamiltonian somewhere. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this theorem is true in dimension greater or equal to 3. Okay. So, so, you take any Hamiltonian. This is a hypersphere in the space of phases. Then you cut it into five parts. And you paste it again, and then you get two systems. Uh, with, so you have double the energy. You can do it uh, once again. And then you get infinite energy. So, the, mm, there is nothing to see with any ether. Okay? But it can happen. The, the advantage of uh, taking into account uh, non archimedean geometry, because you know when you cut the sphere, the, 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 the volumes you cut must be non loading measurable. So if you are in the reals and in the physics of reals, it's going to be experimentally difficult to do that. But if you are in, in the surreal numbers with infinitesimal, you can do this very easily. Okay, you just have to master this scale, and then you can do it. You do it. You you you. Okay. So does it happen? I think that you know uh, in the cosmology models we have today uh, that the uh, universe is uh, elliptic, uh, Euclidean, or hyperbolic. Uh, you you always have a, a, the universe becomes cold, and the expansion the, the, the expansion speed of the universe should uh, decrease. And this is not what we see, it increases, it increases. If it increases, it means that we create energy. So it's not more mad doing saying this and saying that there is dark energy. Okay, so well, where does it come from? At least there is a mechanical system, a, a procedure to make it happen. And why wouldn't it happen statistically over the universe uh, in a standard way? And we could even from the the increase of speed of the expansion of the universe, uh, uh, it would give the, the density of uh, ether, infinitesimal size ether, that we have, for example. Any other 
Any more questions? Up here, one there. I have to admit that uh, I am a little bit confused. <laughs> yes. So uh, you said that I had a, <laughs> if I understood well, uh, you said that uh, energy conservation doesn't exist. Is is that did I correctly understand? Yes. I said that if you if if I had the right to use the same mass as the one you use in quantum physics, the ones that David used, uh, David, sorry, Peter used this, this morning, from this mass, I can extract a theorem saying that there is no conservation of energy in an uh, isolated system. I, I just said how to do this with the Bernard theorem, 1924, long time ago. Okay? So physicists have to face the contradictions of their own theory. Okay? The, the, your cathedral is not coherent. <laughs> okay? Mine is. I'm a mathematician. There is, at, at least we don't know any contradiction in math. Okay, so what is, what is energy for you? Sorry? What is energy for you? Oh, uh, so. Good question. Just one minute. Okay, uh, for me, energy is only kinetic energy. The only one. Yes, it, you can deal with this. So that's why it is not conserved. Sorry? That's why it is not conserved. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is always conserved because you, you have some, always some, some uh, vibration and so on. So it, it's, no, no, this is, there is only kinetic energy and uh, which uh, you find under the, the you know, uh, uh, heat is uh, kinetic energy and, and so on. So there is the only concept of mass and uh, MC2, MC square, okay, which, which could be a problem. And in fact, it is not, but uh, I, I refer you to my book and where I explain it. Okay? So there is no contradiction. Yeah. So so for example, when you pay your energy bill, what are you paying? <laughs> um, you're, free, you're paying the profit of the company with <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We should uh, what? stop here because it's taking too long now. Because then we're getting late. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you again, Jean-François.